Hi guys, this week we are talking about ocean habitats, starting from the shallowest and moving to the deepest. We're going to start out in the intertidal zone, which means between tides. These organisms that live in the intertidal zone have to be really good at adapting to changes in their environment because the tide is constantly coming in and out. So at low tide, they are outside in the dry land. Um, the sun is direct. They have to be able to survive that. They also have to be able to survive being completely underwater um, and adapting to changes in salinity and also temperature. So these are things like seabirds, clams, um, other shelled organisms like hermit crabs, regular crabs, and sea stars. Here's a nice diagram that shows what's happening as the tide is changing. So these things that live in the high tide zone are things that are able to spend more time out of the water and these things in the low tide zone are gonna spend more time under the water. Um, important to note that everything in the intertidal zone is getting sunlight and so plants are able to grow in all areas of the intertidal zone. All right, we're gonna move underwater now, completely underwater into two different environments that are in the shallow ocean depending on the temperature. So in hot water, these are coral reefs, and in colder water, these are kelp forests. Um, important that when I say cold water, I don't mean Arctic water. I mean um, cold, but not that cold. And then the hot water is tropical environments, um, Florida Keys, um, Caribbean, those sorts of places. So starting in the coral reef, the coral reef is an extremely diverse ecosystem. Corals like this brain coral right here are these amazing animals. They're actually about the size of ants that produce this hard limestone shell um, that covers them and stays there after they die and then the new shells are deposited on top of the old ones. Um, the coral and the algae, which looks like this, actually have a mutualistic relationship. So the algae live inside of these corals and produce food through photosynthesis. So the algae are plants. Um, and they work together to create these beautiful ecosystems that are so nutrient rich, um, plenty of plants, plenty of animals, about 25% of the ocean species that we know of actually live in coral reefs. So really amazing places in warm water environments. Unfortunately, what's happening in a lot of coral reefs around the world is this situation called coral bleaching, where the coral is getting either too hot or too cold, mostly too hot because of global climate change and it's actually dying and unable to grow. And so you can see this coral reef is really different from the one that I showed you before in that there's very little diversity. You don't see a lot of fish swimming around um, and it's, it's a dead ecosystem. So this is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, but it's happening in lots of other places too. The other shallow water environment is a kelp forest and you would find these in Northern Oceans um, or deep southern oceans around um, New England, Canada, um, northern Europe, those sorts of places. Kelp is this amazing plant. It's a giant seaweed. It can actually grow up to 33 centimeters every day. And you might not know this, it's a ingredient in ice cream. So you have probably eaten kelp before. It has these bulbs in the actual plant that are filled with air and that allows them to grow towards the surface. So even if they're pretty deep down, they know which way is up because they have these air bulbs inside of them. Um, they also are a great habitat for a lot of organisms. You can see like they're a great place to hide, um, to avoid predators. Very nutrient rich, very diverse, um, lots of sunlight in cold water. All right, time to move into the open ocean. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, you might remember a scene where Marlin gets really upset because the ray has taken the children fish to this place called the drop-off. And he's really upset about that. And he starts yelling and screaming, you're going to the drop-off? And he's really, really worried about it. What's interesting is that the drop-off is actually a real place. So Nemo and 
his friends live right up here in this zone called the photic zone. And it's called the photic zone because it has light. Anytime you hear photo, it means light. That's the area that sunlight can reach. It's the first 200 meters of the ocean. Ignore that comma, it's not supposed to be there. Um, so they're living in this coral reef, very diverse, lots of plants, plenty of sunlight. What happens is that when you hit this continental shelf right here, you start to have a very steep drop off and that's exactly what the movie is talking about when it says the drop off. As you get deeper and deeper, you move into areas where there is no light. So it's called aphotic. Um, and there'd be no plants here, very dark, until you get all the way to the bottom, which is the benthic zone. There also is in the oceans some trenches because the continental plates are moving apart and they create this very, very, very deep trench, um, which is also something that you see in the movie Finding Nemo if you've watched it before. Also important to know that anytime you see this root pelagic, it means that you're talking about the open ocean. So the photic zone is the only zone in the open ocean that would be able to support algae or any sort of plant life. Um, and any deeper than that, there will be no more plants. Plants are producers, so they're really important to ecosystems, both on land and in the ocean. And especially in the open ocean is this um, plant-like protist called phytoplankton that supports um, a large, large portion of the fish that live there and um, other animals too, mammals, whales. Um, without them, those sorts of larger organisms can't be supported. All right, moving down into the aphotic zone, we find some organisms that look very, very strange. And it's also important to know that this zone has not been very well explored. And that's because it's so deep that the pressure is too much for divers and the temperature is too cold. And so until recently, we didn't have the technology to really explore the deep ocean. We still haven't explored it a whole lot. And so we, as scientists, believe that there's a lot of undiscovered life down in the deep ocean. So these organisms, because there's no plants, rely on these dead particles that are falling down from the surface and the photic zone. So these particles that you see here are actually debris from um, things that have died and are sinking down to the bottom of the ocean. And this is what they eat instead of eating plants since they can't. Also, a lot of deep sea organisms have this bioluminescence which is pretty amazing. It means that they glow in the dark. Um, it's the same thing that fireflies have. Some jellyfish, these um, anglerfish have this gene. And then we also have things called extremophiles, which are organisms that can live in really extreme environments. And these include these super hot geothermal vents where bacteria can live in complete darkness just with the heat that's being produced from these vents. So these vents would be a part of the benthic zone, which is the ocean floor. All right, so now that we've talked about the different ocean zones, I want you to keep in mind that so much of the ocean is still unexplored. And even though we know a lot about the organisms that live there, there's still a whole lot more to learn. Um, and we'll be talking about how we can learn those things and ideas about that um, in our next video. So thanks for watching. Don't forget your discussion post and have a great week. Bye.